We have Jets on Jets crime. I'm going to re- be reacting to the comments that Rex Ryan made about Robert Saleh yesterday on the radio in New York. We'll be talking about those comments and, quite frankly, what made sense from those comments and, well, what didn't and what was just flat out wrong. That's what we're talking about today. Hello, everyone. Welcome in. My name is Jake Asman. This is the Jake Asman Show for a Tuesday. I ask if you're new to the channel, you subscribe right over here. Thanks to everyone who helped us get over 8,000 subscribers. Appreciate all of you who watch these videos each and every day. We'll have videos throughout the week leading up to the Jets and the Miami Dolphins on Sunday. Hopefully, at this time tomorrow, it's officially official. Zach Wilson's once again the starting quarterback. But with that being said, today we're going to talk about the comments that Rex made on the uh, Di Pietro and Rothenberg program on ESPN New York. So I'm going to try something new on the channel here. I'm going to play you the comments, and then we're going to react to them. So if you missed it, here were Rex's comments where he tore into Robert Sala and he even said he's making it personal with these comments. This guy's supposed to be a defensive guru. I heard everything, and I take it personal on this one. Everything I heard about was, well, this guy's a lot like a lot like myself, but without the the bad part. Yeah, well, some of the bad part you need because this team doesn't play with any any damn heart. It, it, I mean, that that's the thing that's disappointing to me. And don't ever compare this guy to me, this Robert Sala to me, because statistically, one time they were like a top defense. All right. Four out of, here's one thing they're going to be familiar with. Four out of five years, the 49ers were dead last in their division. So he's going to be dead last again. So he's used to that. So to me, I'm a little pissed off about it when when I hear that this guy, you know, his background's a lot, a lot like yours. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. So that's Rex ripping in the Salah. I'll play you what Salah said on the Michael K show responding to Rex in a moment. But let me start with this. A lot of what Rex is saying as far as the Jets' defensive struggles this year, he's not wrong. Where I think Rex is wrong is he's making it personal. Like, nobody actually compared Robert Sala to Rex Ryan. The only comparison that was made at the beginning of the whole thing was when Robert Sala was hired, we noted that the Jets hired another successful defensive coordinator. We noted that both guys are fiery on the sideline. But that was really it. Nobody else made any real comparisons to Robert Sala and Rex Ryan. Rex saying that he's taking things personal and he's really pissed off about it. Look, I respect the honesty. And as an analyst, that's all you could hope for when you have a an analyst on TV or radio. But I'm sorry, man. Like Rex took it way too far in my mind, ripping Robert Sala the way he did there. I, I mean, Robert Sala has not done a great job this year, right? Specifically, his defense has been horrendous these last four games. We know the stats, 175 points allowed. But I'm sorry, man. Nine games in, you're already just trashing Robert Sala. If you're Rex Ryan, it comes across as very bitter. It comes across like Rex wanted the Jets job. And he was told he wasn't getting the job. He has said over and over again, he'd come back and coach the Jets in a second, but he knows that's never going to happen. So he's in a mode now where he's just ripping everyone and doesn't really care about the ramifications because he knows he's never getting back into coaching once again. He knows it's over for him. So those comments by Rex, not entirely wrong as far as the defense stinking and we all would like to see the Jets play with more, quote, fire and all that. But I'm sorry, man. I thought he took it way too far with going out there and saying it's personal. There's also a misconception about Rex Ryan that I want to get to here in a moment. But first, I'll play you Robert Sala and him responding to those comments you just heard from Rex. This was Robert Sala on the Michael K Show yesterday when Michael asked him about those comments from Rex. Jets head coach Robert Sala, your thoughts on what Rex said? Honestly, you know what? I've never met Rex. I've never had a conversation with Rex. I don't even know him except for people who know him throughout the league. So, obviously, if it's that personal for him, he knows where to find me. So, you surprised that he said it? No, I'm not surprised by him. He's always got something to say. That's becoming Rex's reputation, oh, by the way. He's always got something to say. We should remember Rex for some of the great moments that he brought the Jet fan, right? Obviously, going to -to back-to-back championship games with a rookie and a second-year quarterback is super impressive. And Rex is the second most successful coach, you could argue, in the history of the Jets. So I don't want to take away, you know, anything from Rex's accomplishments As a coach, but there does need to be some revisionist history with Rex. In that same interview, he talks about how he knew how to handle a rookie quarterback. I mean, comparing the 2021 Jets to the 2009 Jets that Mark Sanchez had, it's asinine. It's night 
and day. Night and day. The 2009 New York Jets had an offensive line that was by far and away the best in football. You had Nick Mangold and Debrickashaw Ferguson, a Hall of Famer in Alan Fanica, a pro bowler in Damian Woody. Brandon Moore was a really good guard. Then you look at the running game. Thomas Jones, a rookie in Sean Green, Braylon Edwards, Jericho Cotri. I mean, give me a break. Dustin Keller was actually a good tight end then for the Jets. Remember when the Jets actually had a tight end they could throw the ball to? Like comparing Rex and the 09 Jets to what Sal is dealing with here and ripping him nine games in, I'm sorry. Look, we're all frustrated with this season, but the Jets are two and seven. Rex, what would their record be if you were coaching this team right now? Because I specifically remember your last year, the Jets went four and 12. Or I remember what happened in 2011 when the Jets were eight and five the year after the championship game for the second straight year, and they collapsed down the stretch and finished eight and eight. I remember 2012 where they finished six and 10. Yeah, Rex, you deserve a lot of credit for that eight and eight season in 2013 with rookie Geno Smith. But I'm sorry, man. A lot of like the revisionist history from Rex acting as if his teams never got blown out or acting as if, you know, it was always perfect for him and the Jets. It's just not true. And then Rex leaves the Jets, goes to Buffalo, and can't even make it through two seasons before they fire him um, with, like, two games to go in the year. Like, so it just give me a break with the, well, you know, my teams did this, and I knew how to handle a rookie quarterback. You took over a team that Eric Mangini helped build. So when Robert Sala's brother comes out and says that, he's not entirely wrong. And Eric Mangini should be, like, the Jets GM because he was really good at helping to pick players. The problem for Mangini was – actually coaching the team. But the Jets in 2008 were 8-3, and three, and if Brett Favre doesn't get hurt, that 08 Jets team, and you let me know in the comments, Jet fans, that 08 Jets team that went on the road on Thursday night and beat the Pats in overtime that took down the undefeated 10-0 and 0 Titans in Nashville, if Brett Favre doesn't get hurt, that 2008 team has a legitimate chance to win the Super Bowl. And there was a lot of thought that year in New York that the Jets and the Giants, who had the best records at the time in the league, could meet in the Super Bowl. That was a legitimate conversation in 2008. So, yes, the 09 Jets at 9 and 7 overachieved by winning two road playoff games and getting to the championship game. But to compare this team in 2021 to the team that Rex had is just asinine. It's not even a fair comparison. And Rex making it so personal, it's not a good look. It's just not. Like, I get it. He knows he's never coaching again, but. It's it's not a good look for Rex to come out and lambast Salah like this, especially when he says in the cut you just heard he's never met the guy. He doesn't even know him. It's not like they were arch rivals from their days coaching against one another. I mean, Rex has a reputation now of just going out there and just spouting off nonsense, unfortunately, spouting off a bunch of different things. And as much as I love Rex and appreciate Rex, I, I think he went too far in those comments. I, I really do. I, I think Rex... Wants it to be about Rex. I really do. As Robert Sala's brother said, you know, Rex is just saying this to keep his name and uh, out there and continue to get attention. He knows he's never coaching again. But, like, just, my God, man. Like, Rex Ryan acts as if he's a, a multiple-time Super Bowl winner. He was a good coach. He was really good defensively. But every Jet fan that's like, we want Rex back now, this and that. I mean, I remember what happened in 2013 and 14. A lot of you wanted them gone. Couldn't handle the offense. He got Mark Sanchez hurt in the Snoopy Bowl. You know, he was too focused on the defense. He didn't like the bold predictions. It's just, it's frustrating that Rex is making this a story. And this is the thing with being in the New York market and, and, and being the Jets. Like, a lot of teams, when they're bad, they're just bad and they're irrelevant. Like, the Texans are bad, they're irrelevant. The Jaguars, when they're bad, they're irrelevant. The Browns, for years, when they're bad, they're irrelevant. When the Jets are bad, it's always a circus. There's always a story. And it's the same thing with the Mets as well. My fellow Met fans, I'm not a Met fan, but I relate to many who are. The Met fan knows that the Mets can never just be bad. They're always in the news for some sort of controversy. Something wild happens. Like, they can't just be bad and irrelevant. They got to be bad and in the spotlight. And that's what's happening here with the Jets. So I hope that Sala can get this team to start playing better football here. The schedule softens up. We mentioned it a bunch on the show. Miami, Houston, Philly, Jacksonville. You, you play the Dolphins a second time. Like, there's games that the Jets should be competitive in. And, in fact, there's games that the Jets should be able to win in. So, when I hear these comments from Rex, I, I hope that Robert Sala gets fired up. Now, Sala also had a message to the Jet fans yesterday. I could play that as well. I got all the audio handy here. So, this is Robert Sala talking directly to you, the fans. I'm going to pull the clip and we'll play it because, 
Uh, well, look, Robert Sala is not losing confidence, but things got to turn around here. Like, no one's expecting a ton of wins, but we shouldn't be getting blown out every single week. That, that to me, is the most frustrating part. Like, I could live with the week one loss to the Panthers when it's that close and down to the wire. I can't live with Indy, the Patriot game, this game against Buffalo. Getting blown out is not acceptable. There needs to be progress. Progress is not always winning games. Progress is being competitive. And the Jets and too many of their losses this year have not been competitive. This was Robert Sala's message to the Jet fan base. Robert, you shared a lot this year about the passion and the quality of Jets fans. So what is your message to them this morning following a, a game like yesterday? It's well, a good one. Uh, you know, the... Uh... It is. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just as frustrated as everybody else. And, uh, and my promise, my promise to Jets fans is this thing's going to flip. And the support obviously is always, always warranted. The, the criticism is, is always warranted and you, you reap what you sow. Right. But, uh, this thing's going to flip. I know in my heart, this thing's going to flip, but sometimes you go through, go through struggles to, to, to see glory. And, and I know that that's going to be one of those things that we get to experience. So, we're nine games in. I'm not saying fire Sala. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that he's awful and that he can't get the job done. But I'm also not going to sit here and tell you he's done a really good job. The reality is the, the Jets need to play a lot better. Defensively, that's his side of the ball. That's his specialty. He has to be more involved. They have to figure out a way for this team to play better. They did it for the first four weeks of the season. Like the Jets went out there the first couple games of the year and they didn't allow a, a pass over 300 yards. They weren't getting gashed on the ground like they have been in these past couple of games. So it, it, it was real at the beginning of the year that the defense was playing well. I don't know what's changed. Don't tell me it's just injuries. Every team's got injuries. They got to figure something out. They should not be this bad. I did not expect the Jets to be a good team this year, but they should not be a team that is, you know, challenging the Texans and the Lions for, you know, the, the top pick in the draft. Like the Jets need to go out there now and win some games. Zach coming back hopefully helps. Hopefully he goes out there and plays well. But, you know, I, I, I look, I want to like Robert Sala. He seems like a nice guy. They're not firing him after one year, so I'm trying to be supportive here and be as optimistic as possible. But you can't be optimistic if the Jets continue to get their doors blown off in these games. So, while I think a lot of what Rex said was too far and personal, there's some truth to some of his comments here. There certainly is. So, I'm not saying Rex is 100% wrong. I wish he delivered the message a little more professionally. He didn't make it personal, but Rex doesn't care. Rex is going to be Rex. But as far as the Jets in 2021, you got to figure it out, man. This team should not be as bad as they've been. No one's saying they're a playoff team. Hell, no one's even saying they're a good team. But the fact of the matter is you cannot allow 54 points to the Patriots, 31 points to the Bengals, 45 points to the Colts, and 45 points to the Bills in four consecutive games. That cannot happen. Cannot happen. And when the schedule is Miami, Houston, Philly, New Orleans, Miami, and Jacksonville for your next six games, the Jets better be competitive in all those games. They should win some of those games, including the Houston game in two weeks. They better win that game. Otherwise, I'll never hear the end of it living down here in Houston. But my point is this. They got to show us a lot more. So while I'm frustrated with you know, just everything going on right now, I recognize there's still eight games left in the year and the Jets want to salvage this year. They could do so by playing better down the stretch and obviously Zach Wilson coming back from this injury and going out there and playing good football. The reality is you look at the situation for Zach Wilson, I think he'll benefit from having sat for the last three games. There's no more fake quarterback controversy with Mike White turning back into, well, a backup quarterback on Sunday against the Bills. And I think ultimately, Wilson now will benefit from Booth Mike LaFleur, John Beck being on this team's coaching staff, helping him on the sideline. And ultimately, it seems like the Jets' offense is playing a lot better, better than it has all year. Elijah Moore is coming into his own. Obviously, Corey Davis is back. Hopefully, he doesn't fumble another pass like he did on Sunday. You know, you look at the running backs and Carter and Ty Johnson. The O-line has been a lot better after a rough start other than right guard, as we all know. So if they want to salvage this year, then they got to go out there and play better down the stretch. And specifically, Zach's got to play well down the stretch and show us something. I think he will. And that's how the Jets could still win some games here and salvage the year. But overall, I mean, I get the frustration from every Jet fan I do, but as far as Robert Sala, 
He's going to need more than nine games before we know what he is as a head coach. And Rex Ryan should know better than making it personal. But that's Rex. Love him or hate him. That's what he's going to do. Those are my thoughts on the Rex comments. That's my thought. Uh, are the, you know, those are my thoughts on where the Jets are at right now with eight games to go in the season. If you agree or disagree, let me know in the comments. You can subscribe to the channel right over here. Back with more videos throughout the week. My name is Jake Asman. This has been the Jake Asman Show. Thank you all for watching. Go Jets, and I'll talk to you guys soon. See ya. is so easy to use people always tell us that our designs are really thought out it is not letting me sign out i think the video is still rolling but i'm not uh stream not letting me leap so if i'm still live right now i apologize i don't know how to end this video All right, well, I try and figure this out here. I'm just going to stay on here. So I can't see the comments on my, like, user feed here, but then I see the comments when I actually uh, clicked on the video here. So let's – I'm going to try and just read some of these here, I guess, as I try and see if StreamYard will let me end the broadcast. I've never had this happen before. End broadcast. An error occurred. Not yet. I, You know what? There's too much going on right now. My screen is all over the place. I can't believe there's 84 people watching this right now. You guys are awesome. But I need to figure out how to actually stop this video so the people that watch it after the fact uh, <laughs> try and, you know, figure out here how to, you know, end this thing. Hold on. I, I kid you not. So I use I, I record the show, a little, little inside YouTube here. I, I record the show using the program StreamYard. And when you're done with the broadcast, there's a button that says, and broadcast. Well, the issue is I'm hitting that, but it says an error occurred. Wait a moment, then try again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and refresh my page and see if that will then let me end this broadcast. If it doesn't end, I mean, I mean, I'm just going to sit here all day and maybe I'll talk into the mic. Maybe I won't. I don't know what I'm going to do. Hold on one moment.